not everybody suffered equally. I mean, when you go into uh, slavery, it's more, much more complex than all white people were the oppressors and black people were the victims. If you, if you dissect it, you will find there were about 3,700 free blacks who owned 12,000 slaves. Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. Okay, yeah, some of you guys were asking us about the uh, reparations and all that talk. I think we kind of talked about that a little bit before, but not like a whole lot. Anyways, I was watching this Dr. Phil uh, clip of uh, Robert Woodson um, and he kind of explains it really well um, I do like his like his thought process on it because the way he's thinking about it is the exact way that I'm thinking about it I'm sure Karen too so anyways we're gonna watch this clip and you guys tell us what you think um, and we will discuss you say you don't support reparations why not not everybody suffered equally I mean when you go into uh, slavery it's more, much more complex than all white people were the oppressors and black people were the victims. If you, if you dissect it, you will find there were about 3,700 free blacks who owned 12,000 slaves, black slaves. The question is, do the descendants of those free blacks who owned black slaves, do they pay? Blacks really uh, benefited more the first 100 years after slavery we have in the last 50 years. I was born in 1937 during the Depression. Everyone in my small, low-income black community, 98% of the households had a man and a woman raising children. Elderly people could walk safely in that community without fear of being assaulted by their grandchildren. Never heard a gunfire during that time. Never heard of a child being uh, shot to death in the crib. But there are 50 children today who have been shot and killed in our cities. If you talk, you're talking about remedies, we've got to look beyond of saying that, that every solution has to have a, a, a winner and a loser, that blacks can only benefit if whites lose. We have to be defined more than just victims of oppression. When whites were at their worst, blacks were at their best. When we were denied access to, uh, to, to hotels, we built our own. We have to uh, communicate to our people this, the, the history of how they achieved in the face of oppression. But if we continue to sit back and say, all of the challenges that we face in, in a, a out of wedlock versus the violence, that somehow white, the, the control of that is, is in the hands of white America. And therefore, until white people change, there's nothing that we can do this sets up a, a, a terrible situation for this nation. The big crisis facing America is not racial. It is a moral and spiritual freefall that is consuming our children. The highest uh, 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 death rate among black families is homicide. Among uh, Silicon Valley, the highest uh, le level of, of suicide, six times the national average in Appalachia, their uh, prescription drugs. And so if we are to address this crisis that is causing our children to, to lack a, a sense of, of, of personal responsibility or value for their own life, they will take their own life or take someone else's. So in order to uh, address that, we must come together and look beyond race and realize America is drowning because it's in a moral and spiritual freefall. None of us should be defined by the worst of what we were in the past, but we should be defined by what we want to become in the future and that people are motivated to change when you give them a vision of victories that are possible, not constantly reminding them of injuries to be avoided. It was absolutely real what he's saying, and I think this reparation thing is just getting kind of, I'm not trying to be flipped, but it is getting kind of silly. Because at this point, there's gonna, there's no way to decipher between how are you going to, you, you wouldn't be able to properly disperse money like that. You would have to go back. Mm -hmm. You know, and even then, what about, as he was saying, the black slave owners? It, it wasn't like there was like two or three or a hundred. There were thousands. Yeah. So, you see what I'm saying, how silly 
it is the reparations. And real quick, the people he, the people that were across from him, those three individuals, I think it was two women and a, one, a man, and there was a man in the audience as well. So they all believe that we should get reparations. Like they're all very, <laughs> very much into it. And I just, I believe like what he's saying, you yeah. know. They they went on to say there was also a guy on a um like a satellite mm -hmm. that was saying that that um that he believed I think he's a professor but he said he believed that um, reparations would do us good and that every black person should get at least three hundred and fifty to three hundred eighty thousand dollars per black person and then all of a sudden people are like that's not enough see how this goes see it's never gonna be enough because enough. you can't put a price on humanity right you see what I'm saying we can only move forward. forward there can never be a price As we have. for the way black mm -hmm. people were treated not only in the united states but how we were treated how we treat each other in africa right before we even got over here you know what i mean and again why aren't we asking africa for reparations had mm -hmm. it not have been for the african tribes fighting each other and mm -hmm. and selling us to the colonizers mm -hmm. we wouldn't have ever even come over here there's a wonderful clip of don lemon talking to um i can't believe, remember the one i'll find a clip i'll put it up those who are asking uh for reparations for colonialism and they're wondering you know a hundred billion dollars twenty four billion dollars here and there five hundred million there some people want to be paid back and uh, and members of the public are wondering why are we suffering when you are you know you have all of this vast wealth those are legitimate concerns if reparations need to be paid we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages absolutely that's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. But that's a very interesting clip because she is absolutely correct. Yeah, she, she went on mm -hmm. to talk about that. You know what the, I mean? And Don Lemon was uh, left dumbstruck. Yeah, like what You know what I mean? <laughs> and the thing is, is it's like you can't put a price on humanity. And I, look, I know that this is going to sound controversial, but I really don't think a lot of black people give a damn about, about uh, slaves. I'm going to be honest. I think this is all about reparations yeah. and getting a payday. Yeah. This is what it is. Because, you know, if you really cared about black people and your communities, mm -hmm. we would not be having the, ga the, the, the gang violence that we have in, mm -mm. in major inner cities. We wouldn't have the out-of-wed out uh, uh, births of children. Yeah. The, the numbers we have. We wouldn't have the number of abortions that we have. We wouldn't have the welfare, uh, number of women on welfare. We wouldn't have a matriarchal community. We, we mm -hmm. don't need the government. Mm -hmm. Like Robert Wilson said, we benefited, we benefited mm -hmm. um, the first 50 to 100 years after slavery than we are now. The numbers, mm -hmm. as far as us owning our own businesses, having our families intact, going to church, mm -hmm. you know, doing the things that normal human beings do because they love themselves mm -hmm. and they love God. No, we decided to fight the power, put our fist in the air, and ex as soon as the civil rights movement was over, everything tanked. Mm -hmm. Now that we have all this freedom, we're integrated and we're all excited about it, we, we, have a hor we have a horrible numbers. Jail rates are high. The, um, like I said, the single mother rate is high. The abortion rate is high. The everything. Poverty well, rate is high. Yeah, and I think that when, so if we're really going to do, if we're really supposed to be doing our ancestors a, a, a good, if we're really supposed to be um, honoring them, you know, in any in any way, shape, or form, it would be to succeed. That's what that's what I believe that they would have wanted for us to succeed, move forward, and can and, and be good people. You know, but we did instead is what Kara was saying. We we ended up having a ton of gang violence. We're killing each other at a more rapid rate than any police officer could. That everyone's always you know getting upset about. It's like we we are we are accelerating the the death of our people ourselves. But yet we're saying we want to honor our ancestors by having reparations. However, we're the contradiction. The, the contradiction with, with that is just ridiculous to me. We're not doing anything really to help our people ourselves. And so when we start crying, crying and uh, whining about reparations, it's like there is something very disingenuous about how much do you actually care about mm -hmm. slavery. Because I, you know, and it's interesting because I, I don't think that all people, you know, obviously not all, but can't say all, but it just seems like a lot of the people who talk about reparations, I'm talking about me just personally, when I talk to someone about reparations, I'm another black person, um, I go down, like, I don't just talk about the money part. I want to know what they know about slavery. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
majority of black people that I talk to about slavery don't know about slavery. They don't know the real history of it, but they want to get reparations for this. And it's for me, I believe that you should know all of your history before you start asking for things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like it's just something very, um, it's just very disingenuous to me. I don't, I don't believe that everyone even understands their own history to be asking for this. You know, and I think Robert Woods, you know, when he talked about, you know, he's a great man, by the way. But when, when he talks about, um, you know, that period of time when, when whites were at their worst, we were at our, our best. You know, when we, they didn't let us into hotels or motels or whatever, we just built our own. And they didn't, you know, what's interesting is that they didn't cry about this. Black people did not whine about this. Black people didn't care about having the colored water fountain. I mean, on some level, obviously, I'm sure that they care on some level. But my point is that they just move forward. The art of moving forward is just like we f we're we we're failing at that. How can mm -hmm. they have moved forward with some of the atrocities that they went through? I'm talking about slavery, and I'm also talking about Jim Crow. I'm, I'm talking about all of that. How can they go through those type of atrocities and embarrassing things and humiliating situations and move forward and succeed in life? And somehow we don't have any of those things. We have All we have is opportunity over here. Black people only have opportunity. And somehow we're talking about that we're oppressed. And I'm like, I don't, you didn't have to, the water fountain situation was not your, it didn't happen in your, in your world. You know, the lunch counter thing, that didn't happen in, in your world. You know, bus, the bus system, that didn't happen to you. Happened to them, but they move forward. And most people yeah. my age didn't fight no wars. No. They didn't do no slavery. It's ridiculous. They, we, we benefited off, mm -hmm. and that's why we have all this time to protest. Right. Because we're benefiting off the, yeah. the backs of other people. We are. Including white people. Yes. White people who, Union soldiers, who died mm -hmm. for us to be free. Yeah. To be quite honest with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, um, people who were part of the Underground Railroad, white people, mm -hmm. who hid us. Yeah. In their barns and, you know, and, and sheltered us so we can get to one end or the other. Mm -hmm. Who could have been caught and could have gotten probably worse than us mm -hmm. for being uh, traitors, race traitors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Again, black people who own slaves. You know, where do you give money? Robert Woodson, is, he was on the um, documentary Uncle to Uncle Tom. He makes mm -hmm. a point to say, we kill more people. Mm -hmm, black people kill more black people in one year than the KKK did in 70 years. Yeah, of all of that time. We're doing a bang up we, job they don't, right we now. We don't need the KKK anymore. No. The KKK anymore. No. We're doing a good job of on our on our own. Yeah. We just I mean we do it if you just look at our our our, our democratic run um cities. Yeah. It's I mean the, the the single mother rate is seventy four percent, but in a lot of these cities it's close to ninety. Yeah. Ra race is not and I, I I'm not gonna get tired of saying this and I don't care if it's annoying to hear. Race is not the most prevalent thing and the most harmful thing going on to on today with black people today it is not it is not a it's not a, a huge factor no one even has really people most people have not even experienced real racism but you want reparations it's like this is it's to me i just don't you know <laughs> whenever i think about this cuz they always want a dollar amount i think it's like they want to pay out people want to pay pay out and stuff mm -hmm. and it's like there isn't enough money for there me. There isn't enough to money know for me. I'm exactly yeah. what happened with us. But don't you think it's because like the way I guess the way I'm looking at it, I don't know if you guys can understand where I'm coming from when I say this. I hope I'm saying it the right way. But I don't think that honoring our ancestors is about a check check. I don't think so. I think that honoring our ancestors means that we are supposed to succeed, do well, have families. Um, sense of community, you know, um, uh, present ourselves well and outward. I'm talking about just outward appearance. Present ourselves well, speak well, you know, be nice to people, courteous. Yeah. God fearing. If there was going to be thing. a reparation, it should have been to the directly sent to the people right after. Right after. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know and that I mean? was it. They deserve that money. That's they it. they endured that that trauma. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he said, and and most people. Like again, Daniel's right. Like there, you talk to the average black person sure. about history, and, and including myself, for a long, long time. Long time, I didn't know. You know, had it not been for mm -hmm. this show, and I happened to look deeper into mm -hmm. our history mm -hmm. and what we did to ourselves, mm -hmm. and then yeah, you know what I mean. A lot of black people have absolutely no idea. Mm -hmm. They're lost in the wilderness when it mm -hmm. comes to when it comes to our oppression.
Mm -hmm. They don't realize that a lot of our oppression did come from us. Mm -hmm. It's a lot and of now, people, and, yeah. and if you really want to go deeper, we're still oppressing ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're oppressing ourselves by not being married when we have children. Mm -hmm. We're oppressing ourselves by going into debt. Mm -hmm. We're oppressing ourselves because to me, uh, welfare is slavery 2.0 mm -hmm. because it keeps people on a legacy of that system mm -hmm. and they never get off. Yeah. They rarely do they all just jump off of that, that system as a system that keeps you locked mm -hmm. and pays you just enough so that you don't want to leave. And not enough that you can really survive. Yeah. And that's just what it is. It's a slavery. It's a, it's a, it and is. white people can be on that slavery too, by the way. It's true. And there are a lot of white people on that slavery. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I think that the only way that you can free yourself is to understand your history. Learn from the people who came for you. Because Robert Wilson's um, generation is leaving us. I love that generation. I, I mean, I miss my grandfather. I miss my, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I mean, because those people were the people who actually lived through Jim Crow, yeah, like through the hand. Depression. Yeah. Those people can give you a first... White people do, during the Depression. Those mm -hmm. people can give you a first-hand you know, take what they felt mm -hmm. during that time. All of us are just speculating because we weren't a part of that. I certainly wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just, like, again, I'm just a beneficiary from, from the what people they had came, to go through. Even my mother's generation. My mother yeah. was born in 1958. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a biracial woman in America, she has a story too. So, I mean, you know, that's the thing. It's just like, I feel like, I feel like we are just, it feels like we're profiting off something that most of us don't even really know. Yeah. Why. You're the, getting a check. You don't even know where you're getting it. You're that's my getting biggest it. problem. That's, that's my biggest problem with it though. Is when you were saying that even me, like, um, it wasn't because of this show it was the reason why we dive mm -hmm. deep into a lot of things. Really, honestly, when we started being conservative, that only happened kind of by default because we had the stuff we learned about being liberal was um, it was information we were not getting. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've, they've stopped a flow of information very early, early on in our all of our lives. Right. Mm -hmm. So very early on, they start, they start talking about certain people. They um, are they talk about it very fleeingly. Booker T. Washington is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's the Frederick Douglass? These are all black men in that time that were um, said to be Republicans. Well, the conservatives, yeah. and most black people were. So that's the thing, is most black yeah. people were, were, conservative. were Republicans. Yeah. Because, and because... They it believed was, you, it was you, right because you it was more freedom, yourself up by your but also the, the some of the first um, you know representatives of states yeah were Republicans, Republicans. you know mm -hmm. um, like again if you go on to watch the documentary Uncle Tom they go on to talk about even mm -hmm. the Civil Rights Bill mm -hmm. um, there were people in the Senate who who voted mm -hmm. much more on the, the, the there was a greater number of people that a greater number of Republicans mm -hmm. that voted for the Civil Rights Bill than there were. Democrats, mm -hmm. but LBJ got they got the credit for it because yeah. LB, LBJ was president. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know. I just thought that they did. But it turns out Democrats didn't want us to have civil rights. Mm -hmm. But yet we are in the ninety percentile voting for this 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 party. This party. You know what I mean? And the thing is, it's like I don't. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. You know, again, not caping up for the Republican Party because they do messed mm -hmm. up stuff too. But I'm just saying, conservatively speaking, when I look at the platforms, I think that black people are much more conservative mm -hmm. than they are um, mm -hmm. anything democratic. Yeah. Yeah. Much more. But we have we have completely allowed ourselves to be brainwashed mm -hmm. and not and not let to no, I mean sometimes people say stuff like even in our comments, that they'll say stuff and they're not even making any sense. I know. Because it's they haven't read anything. It's like They've just heard like different you know, so they're regurg points. yeah, they're regurgitating things from CNN and stuff like that. They're not even real, like it's not real um, research. And the instant you know? they do get, let's just play devil's advocate. The instant they they would give us uh, reparations, if that money went past so fast because people didn't understand money, mm -hmm. then we'd be asking for more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would never ever ever end. There is never going to be enough that anyone can do to right the wrongs. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is move on. If you read Up From Slavery, Booker T's Washington's Up From Slavery, mm -hmm. you will hear from the, the mouth of them. Like Him, I, like I, said, yeah. They forgave those people. They even helped. When, when slavery ended, there, I mean, it's amazing the kind of resilience our yeah. people had back so, then. I mean, they, yeah. they didn't Right after they were emancipated, mm -hmm. they actually, a lot of the, 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 the um, wealthy people who owned slaves mm -hmm. lost money mm -hmm. because they didn't have that crutch anymore of having other people do work for them. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those slaves who didn't leave the South, they saw their old masters going down mm -hmm. and they actually helped them. That's biblical. You're supposed to. 
You're supposed to help people. You're supposed mm -hmm. to forgive people. Nobody is without sin. So it's just like when people do that, it's just like that. We don't have that spirit anymore. Yeah. And yet we have so much more as far as freedom than they had. It's unbelievable that we're the way that we're behaving right now. It's honestly kind of bizarre to me when I see people, uh, black people specifically, walk around and pretend that we are, we don't have things. You know what I mean? Like we don't have basic human rights and stuff. Right. Like, like it's 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 such a bizarre thing. I'm like, you do know that as a black person in the United States of America, you can do anything a white person can do. You do know that, right? Look, there were actual times written written into law where it was systemically racism, right? It was systemically racist. It was systemically, it was all systemic discrimination. Mm -hmm. You cannot do this. You cannot hire this person because they're black. This black person cannot. These were laws, okay? That's called, when something's built into a law, that's called systemic racism. That was once a part of our country. Those laws have been written out. Now, people are, are jumping on the phantom laws. Oh, well, you know, it may not be written in the law, but it's still there. You know, it's just kind of like, um, what do they call it, undercover racism. I'm like, okay, so <laughs> the people who have succeeded in life, black people have succeeded in life for years, they didn't think about this phantom law. They just decided to do well and succeed. So I don't know how it is that people are still like beating that drum how yeah. could it be how could that have happened how can it be that Jim Crow times they did better I'm talking about on every single level financially spiritually family wise how that is almost it's so embarrassing it's like no we should be able to be we should do be able to do more and we have we have but we're still pretending that we haven't we, we've gone to the point now where black women don't even like each other. Yeah. Black men and women sure don't. Uh, black women do not like each other. Black men and women do not mm -hmm. like each other. We, we, uh, all day long we dog each other. You know, I go on Facebook all day, you know, <laughs> even on our deep. show because we, you know, we, I, I believe in men, but then women don't like that we do. Yeah, I know, right? You know what I mean? Like and what? then you can go on any other YouTube show and you'll see men just talking down about women. You'll see women just, just, uh, just can't hate they yeah. hate men so much mm -hmm. and i'm just thinking god that's like reparations is the least of our problems no yes I actually it's think like that's the least of our problems. Real problems you know what i mean we have some mm -hmm. real problems that that mm -hmm. you can't put a you can't you can't throw money at it yeah this is a spiritual problem money does not yeah. always help everything i think people think that they think that they're going to get money and mm -mm. somehow they're going to be rich mm -hmm. and then as soon as they get rich everything's just going to be okay not it's not going to be okay have you watched these rich people Look at these right. famous wealthy people. Just look at them alone. Right. Most of them cheat on their wives. They they're alcoholics. Mm -hmm. They're drug users. They kill themselves. They they're unhappy. They they don't look good. You know what I mean? Right. But we for some reason push that down mm -hmm. and just see that they have materialism, yeah. stuff, and somehow things. Yeah. It took me to lose everything mm -hmm. to realize that I really have anything anyway. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? To, to be true. homeless and to lose everything, mm -hmm. it took me to get to there to realize that it was never about money. Mm -hmm. It was never about any of that. It was about me. It's about the way I see the world mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. I have the problem. Yeah. And until you see that, it won't make a difference how much money I have. It won't make a difference mm -hmm. of anything. Yeah. If you aren't right, and a lot of black people are we're not right. There's something is wrong with us. Mm -hmm. We're too angry and, and, and also free. That's the bizarre thing. We're too right? angry and free. Yeah. That's How not that? we, people have much more like Thomas Sowell said, we we had he said his generation we had much more against us. Mm -hmm. But you, you we had poor neighborhoods, we had mm -hmm. a lot of poor neighborhoods. He said, but an old man could walk down the street in his in, in one of his old mm -hmm. poor neighborhoods and not get assaulted by his grandkids. I see these kids now and I think, oh my God. Like, Even when Lord you look at that thing mercy. that happened in Chicago, you yes. think reparations is going to help that? That's parenting. That's parenting. That 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 is the majority of the problem. It's broken homes. No fathers. No fathers. I watched a video where a lady um, was saying, oh, oh my gosh, if I can find that clip, I'll, I'll try to find the clip. But there was a lady who was on the... They asked her about reparations. It was those smashing grabs. Mm -hmm. And they were smashing and grabbing in the Gucci stores. I can't remember what city it was. It might be it might have Chicago. Mm -hmm. It was Chicago. And they talked to her and she's like, Yeah, I think they should be doing this. She, you know, just 
She's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I think they should be doing. They should tr they should go and, and steal the stuff out of these um, big high price stores. That's your reparations. That's us getting our reparations. And I thought this is the ignorance of society right now. Someone builds a business, works hard to build that business, and you want to go and just tear it down because you're pretending that you know anything about reparations. You just want to steal. And just when, you know, and just when, in the moment that that all the businesses leave, yeah, because you're no longer Walmart, just left. Yeah, Walmart. Just left Chicago. Yeah. I mean, you know. Too much theft. The instant a, pl a businesses start to leave and then there's no job opportunity and no place to go to the grocery store, then you become an ultra depressed area. Just a bunch of um, degenerate type of people because mm -hmm. you have nothing anymore. Right. I hope you like your smash and grab reparation because that might be all you ever get. Right. I see people just upset over things that honestly, if you put some hard work into your life, and you and you self reflect a little mm -hmm. bit. You go get your reparations. Right. We're not under the whip no more. Yeah. We're not even drinking from separate water fountains anymore. But you would think that we are. It's just it's just a mass brainwashing. Just you know what I mean? It, and it's just like if we again, I think what's his name? Um, someone is one of the contributors on um Jason Whitlock. Mm -hmm. Um, he said, I, I almost wish we would get it. Just so, because so when we go through it, we will. We will. He's just like, then we will see that it had never had anything to do with that. It always was. That. I mean, I think Jim Carrey said that once. Yo, I wish that the world yeah. could get fame and fortune so they could realize that that was it, that it's not it's not the answer. Yeah, it's not. You know why? Because he has all that and mm -hmm. his heart, his life was shit. Mm -hmm. That's why he said that. A rich white man. Yeah. Said that. You know what I mean? And that's just it. It's never the answer. We need to be, I think that black people... It's a spiritual battle, people. Yeah, it is. And, and I, th I think that black people need to be humbled right now. I think a lot of black people, the ones that get it, get it, thank God, you know, but the ones that don't get it, which is a massive amount of black people, mm -hmm. um, we need to be, they need to be humbled. We're so easily manipulated. We are easily. We're in our feelings. We're angry yeah. in our feelings, and, it, and, it's, and, and I know like a lot of black people can see it, mm -hmm. but it's on purpose. It gets so it is. Yeah. They, they keep us upset it's they keep, keep it on the thing. news they make us all they keep us upset because they want to keep us voting yeah a certain way but they can't do they that they dangle though. that that reparation carrot, carrot in your yeah. face and they make it look like they really you know they're they're fans of the, the yeah. black the black community but the truth is it's, it's all yeah. uh, it's all a hoax it's all just it's it's just gonna blow up yeah. our face I mean, all of this, all this, this money, just to watch our neighborhoods go to crap, our our, mm -hmm. our people go to crap. You know what I mean? And at the end of it, it's just what mm -hmm. a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Because that's what's going to end up when we crash the dollar. But even when you think about just the, just the basic, um, I guess, premise or point to the argument of, of reparations, right? With black people mm -hmm. saying they want the reparations. Just this is a basic argument. The basic argument itself, when you put away everything else, doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Just that doesn't make any sense. Only because we weren't slaves and white people weren't slave owners. Now, mm -hmm. so you see what I'm saying? Like, so it wouldn't, it, there, there would be no way to make that, you cannot write that wrong back in that time. The only way to, in some way, you know, uh, honor is really just to do well. That's what they were doing. That's what slaves did when, they get, when, when slavery was over. That's what they did. They just decided we're free. Um, freedom, freedom comes with a huge amount of responsibility. I think Booker T. Washington said that. Freedom comes with a very big responsibility. And this, this, this need to succeed for black people at that time, it was um, a high priority. It was the highest priority. Their high priority was not talking about how they were slaves mm -hmm. and how they were treated wrong and oppressed. They were, too, by the way, obviously, right? But their highest priority after slavery, being free people, was to succeed. Mm -hmm. Get family. Family, do well. Be spiritual. You know what I mean? This, those were the things that they were looking forward to. Not one of them would say, oh my God, remember back, you know, a few years ago when we were slaves, that was just such a horrible time. You know, you can have that discussion, I'm sure, at some point, but still, um, eye on the prize. We gotta get going. And we just stopped, we just stopped all of that. When civil rights happened, this is a civil rights, civil rights happened, race baiting started, and they kept that you should feel sorry for yourself movement going. We did, and we just never stopped. And they don't talk about about 50 years of our, our 
Oh, up to right. SME, yeah. right after like Robin Wilson or Robert uh, Wilson was saying mm -hmm. that um, th there there is about. 40 or 50 years of our history <laughs> that they don't talk mm -hmm. about. It's like they go from slavery to like Jim Crow. Yeah. And then they go from Jim, Jim Crow. Crow. They just talk about Jim Crow like that. And then they go right to civil, civil rights. rights. Yeah. And the thing is, they don't want to talk about exactly what was going on during Jim Crow. Right. They only want to talk about the KKK and stuff, but they don't want to talk about the fact mm -hmm. that there were a lot of black Wall Streets all through the country. Yeah. Because duh, there had to be. Yeah. Or else we, we couldn't go to the store. Yeah. We do yeah. stuff. We had to create our our, our own. You know. And so people I just, limit it to Tulsa. People people like a lot of black people always want to limit things to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, what happened there? And the truth is, is that we, buses. we had every in, in almost every city. Black people. It wasn't just in Tulsa. Black people mm -hmm. were doing that everywhere. There were black enterprises everywhere. We were, you know what I mean? Like we were just, we we're just. Like, you can't get into somewhere, so just build it. You can't get into this school, make a school. In a way, that you was know? the best thing. That was for the best us. thing. But for yeah. some reason, they don't. They, I know why, but they don't want to talk about it yeah. because then we would be smarter. I mean, right. I think the the thing about being a slave was they never wanted us to know how to read. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they didn't want us to know how to read is because you can access information. Yeah. If you know how to read. Stay and, dumb. And, and yeah. they like to keep us there too. Yeah. You know, keep us dumb. Keep us keep us away from what really happened in our country mm -hmm. with um, black people during during mm -hmm. Jim Crow. Yeah. They don't want us to know no. that we were actually prospering. I think they said even black people were, I think black people were out wedding mm -hmm. white people mm -hmm. at some point. They were out, we were actually, um, economically we were out, we were outnumbering them there as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? But w they never talk about that and they don't want to talk about that because they want to keep you in an emotional state and angry and frustrated mm -hmm. and out there protesting instead mm -hmm. of getting to work. Yeah.